Why do you think that your husband got 70 months? Maccabee actually was helping one officer who appeared to be in distress. And thanks for his bravery, Maccabee was sentenced to 70 months in prison. When at the same time, people that were literally burning down federal buildings got nothing. Like, nothing. Because he's a conservative Christian man, in my opinion. Did bad things happen on January 6th? Absolutely. But you're not going to hold the people from the inauguration when Trump was inaugurated in 2017. You're not going to hold the people from the Summer of Love accountable. Why is there the two tiers of justice in America? I just want that same standard to be applied to January 6th in the Black Lives Matter riot. If prosecutors in some of America's biggest cities can free hardened repeat offenders from jail, they can go out and commit more crimes. Why can't some of these prisoners be freed on bail or given speedy trials? That's what people don't understand is the worst of the worst aren't treated like this. Child rapists, murderers, they get to see their family, they get... Why can't we talk about them being held in the conditions that they're held in? Held without bond, not able to see their family. Yet our representatives won't even touch. This has nothing to do with January 6th. This has everything to do about human rights and American rights. They were tormented and in some cases physically abused by D.C. jail officials. They write of being forced to beg for water and medical aid. They say they've been denied visitors, access to attorneys, and religious services. Some of these jailers are given a kind of green light to abuse the prisoners because they're seen as politically on the wrong side. They're still hunting individuals down, raiding them pre-dawn raids, flashbangs, pulling their children out in the cold, putting dots all over them. It's just a horrific mess. But yet this is shared by the media, not just the media, but by Democrats. And they are supposed to be the party of criminal reform, and we don't want these people to be in horrible conditions, and they care. And some of what I've been reading is just horrendous human rights abuses. Has any politicians reached out to you? They won't. They say they cannot speak to Why? me. Why? Maybe they have skeletons in their closet that they are afraid will come out if they take a stand against this. When someone hears you talk like that, the very first thing they're going to say is, well, that's a lot of dots that have to be connected. And that's conspiratorial. What do you say to that? People want to call us conspiracy theorists, but things are starting to come out as truth now. There is a thread on a string, and it's weaving in and out of the elite politicians, media, entertainment, corporations, all that, and it's pedophilia. Is that a common strategy that intelligence agencies would use where they would try to compromise people in order to get... It really doesn't matter how they're compromising themselves, whether you're putting themselves in with like an Epstein situation or whether they've provided a document that they shouldn't provide. The concept is always the same. You're getting something that's leverageable over them. Then, as an intel service, you've got them. You can start reeling the hook in. Has this changed your view of America? You know, people want to say this is the greatest country in the world, and it absolutely is not. And the way we treat individuals is what happens in third world countries. The J6 hostages now, they should free them. Those people have been treated so badly, especially when you compare them with people that ripped apart and killed people in Portland. How much are you praying that Donald Trump wins? That's the hope. But I think that people don't understand that we can't put everything into one man. It's going to take an army to take our country back, and that's why I just don't know if it's too far gone at this point. Let's get that view on the video to start it out. Yes, indeed. Quite, quite beautiful. 70 degrees here in Florida. All you people in the snow up north, well, you have my sympathy. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, December 5th, 2024. Let's get into it. <clears throat> I guess the theme of today's video is, you know, one thing that amazes me is how well the Democrats infiltrated every facet of our lives. They've taken over the colleges. They took over, uh, you know, education, uh, the Department of Education. They took over the, uh, the, the government. Um, when I say the government, I'm talking about the deep state. Uh, you know, they took over the Pentagon. Those are obviously, uh, uh, you know, Democrats, for the most part, most of the 44 
uh, four-star generals or Democrats. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And what the, the, the other thing that got me was we call them rhinos, is their infiltration of the Republican Party. That's kind of the theme of today's video. I mean, I can't believe this. So, you know, we've got Mittens Romney out of Utah. Utah's supposed to be a conservative state, yet they throw a Democrat into Congress every single time. They've reelected him how many times? Of course, he's resigning this time around, but we still got two more years of that idiot. Utah, what the hell's wrong with you, man? Look at South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. It's another rhino. I, warmongering rhino. Holy moly. And now we, we're finding out about more. I'll tell you what, I love the fact that the Pete is going through a hard time. Listen to this, I cannot believe this is real. <clears throat> Senator Joni Ernst demanding the U.S. military enlist transgenders to serve because we need transgender talent in the U.S. military. She should resign now before humiliating primary in Iowa. Iowa, man, you're red state. <laughs> Why are you sending a Democrat to Congress? What the hell's wrong with you? So the example of transgender people serving in our military, we have transgender people serving in our military. They will bleed red just as the rest of us. But I also take a stance that we should not be integrating transgender people into a certain situations where it does make, if you have a female barracks and you have a transgender woman who has not transitioned, we shouldn't make the rest of the unit uncomfortable about that setting. There are certain accommodations we can make for that transgender individual. But if they bring value to our unit, if they have specialties that we can use, especially if we want to maintain an all volunteer force, we want to bring that talent into our services. And I know that's controversial, but again, I'm looking at what's good for our nation and believe me, when we're facing a recruiting challenge right now, if people are physically willing and able to serve our country, we want them to do so. Wake up, wake up. We got a primary, and this, this woman, she's also, from what I understand, on the Doge Committee, you know, the Department of Government Efficiency. She needs to be banned from that committee <laughs> right now. And not only that, she is one of the main leaders against uh, Pete, God dang it, I can't remember his name, Pete Hargreth, you know, for the um, Secretary of Defense. Oh my God, we got to get these people out. So let's, uh, let's get some other posts here. This was just an interesting factoid from Adam. European corporations have bought more land in Western Ukraine than the Russians have taken on the east side. When he's talking about east side, the east side of Ukraine, the Donbass and Zaporozhye. <laughs> Tom Johnson, I just thought this was kind of expresses my sentiments. A lot of people don't agree with me, and that's fine. It says, I am Jewish. I live in the UK. If anyone denies the Holocaust, I regard them as unspeakably vile and evil, as do most people. Those who now deny the genocide in Gaza, I actually regard as unspeakably vile and evil. Particularly, I condemn any UK politicians and UK media who are genocide deniers. So we don't have any, any intention to exterminate Ukrainian people. They are uh, brothers and sisters uh, to, the, to the Russian people. How many have died so far, do you think, on both sides? It is not disclosed by Ukrainians. Zelensky was uh, saying that it is much less than 80,000 persons on, on Ukrainian side. But there is one very, uh, very reliable figure uh, in um, Palestine during one year uh, after the uh, Israelis started the operation in response to this terrorist attack, which we condemned. And uh, this operation, of course, acquired the, uh, the proportion of uh, collective punishment, uh, which is against international humanitarian law as well. So during one year after the uh, operation started in Palestine, uh, the number of civilians, Palestinian civilians, 
uh, killed uh, is estimated uh, 45,000. This is almost twice as many as the number of civilians on both sides of Ukrainian conflict who died during 10 years after the coup. One year and 10 years. So it is, it is a tragedy uh, in Ukraine. It's disaster in Palestine, uh, but we never ever had as our goal uh, killing people. And the Ukrainian regime did. The head of the office of Zelensky uh, once said that uh, we will make sure that cities like Kharkov and Nikolaev will forget what Russian means at all. Uh, another guy in his office uh, stated that Ukrainians must exterminate Russians through law or, if necessary, physically. Ukrainian former ambassador to Kazakhstan forgot his name, <clears throat> became famous when giving an interview and looking into the camera, being recorded uh, and broadcast. He said, our main task is to kill as many Russians uh, as we can uh, so that our kids have less things to do. And the statements like this are all over the uh, vocabulary of the regime. This was an interesting Savannah. Hernandez, this morning, Iowa Senator Joni Ernst made the horrible mistake of still refusing to confirm support of Pete Hegler's nomination. Since then, we've discovered she, and this is, this is some interesting factoids for you, voted to confirm Lloyd Austin, the traitor, in charge of the military right now. Well, not as much as Millie. <laughs> Millie actually needs to go to jail. I think Austin is just a dumbass, in my opinion. But anyway, for Secretary of Defense, responsible for the horrific Afghanistan withdrawal. And see, that's, he should be stripped of his command, Lord Austin. Okay, just for the killing of 13 Americans needlessly in Afghanistan. Okay? You say, well, he was just following orders. You don't follow orders. In your, when you're in the military, if you get a bad order that's a, unconstitutional or goes against, uh, you know, could get people killed, you don't follow the order, man. Yeah, I understand you may face some consequences, but that's, that's just the nature of the beast. Lloyd Austin needs to be stripped of his command. Anyway, <clears throat> horrific Afghanistan withdrawal. Enforce Biden's unconstitutional military vaccine mandate. <clears throat> Supports transgender soldiers in the military. Votes with Democrats 38% of the time. Called for the U.S. to send more money and weapons to Ukraine. Called Zelensky an inspirational leader. This woman needs to be primaried. Most definitely. Continuing on that theme. This is Insurrection Barbie. And this is why I was talking about the infiltration of the Republican Party. The following Republicans voted to confirm... Merrick Garland. If you don't know who Merrick Garland is, he's the biggest traitor next to uh, uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, who's an even bigger traitor. I, I bet they probably, we'll find out, maybe we'll find out, but they, look at how many rhinos we have. Blunt, Burr, Capito, Cassidy, Collins, Comden, Ernst, Graham, Grazley, uh, I don't know what, Inho? In, Inhoff, N I N H O F E, never heard of him. Johnson, Lanford, McConnell. Well, we knew McConnell, <laughs> the turtle. Please, Kentucky, get rid of the turtle. Please, Kentucky, please. Oh man, Moran, Mukaski. Well, that's a that's a Democrat out of Alaska. I told you that's a messed up election there. The way they 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 stacked the election to get her elected. You need to change back to a normal election, Alaska. Get it done. All right, so um, Portman, Romney, well, we know Romney, at Rounds, Thune, think about Thune. Isn't he the uh, Senate Majority Leader now? Now we got another freaking Democrat in charge of the Senate. Oh my God. Uh, let's see. 
Let's go on. Alejandro Mayorkas. This was the one that I wanted to see. Shelly Moore Capito. Susan Collins. Lisa Murkowski. <laughs> like I said, Murkowski is a Democrat, obviously. Dan Sullivan. Rob Portman. Mitt Romney. Okay, and then this is Lord, uh, Lloyd Austin. Every single Republican except Josh Hawley and Mike Lee voted to confirm him. Who, is this who in this country's history has done as much damage as Garland, Mayorkas, and Austin? My point exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes people post something and you're like, oh my God, I, I should have posted this first. Oh, but hey, how in the hell she gets all this information? Anyway, one destroyed our sovereignty, one destroyed our justice system, and one destroyed our military. And all the aforementioned Republican senators rubber stamped that destruction when they voted for them. Do you see any opposition by the Democrats to Joe Biden's nominees? Another good point. Dan Bongino pointed out if Pete Hathkris, Hathkris, gosh, I, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Get a normal name, Pete. Anyway, uh, Dan Bongino pointed out if we don't get him in his position, they're going to they're gonna do the same thing to Robert Kennedy Jr. and the same thing to Tulsi Gabbard. And we're going to lose the dream team. We've got too many Democrats that pose as Republicans. Do you see any opposition by Democrats to Joe Biden's nominee, nominees? No, you didn't, because there are no Democrats that are Republicans, but there are many Republicans that are Democrats. My point, exactly. You know, rather than walk and talk, <laughs> let's, just, let's just get this going. Uh, go do some readings here. This is another video I want you to see. This is an illegal migrant complaining they gave us no help, only free hotels and bad food. <laughs> Let's watch that video now. They give you three meals a day, a place to sleep. Like what, what did they give you in the shelter? What were the resources? La comida. La comida y el cuarto, food, three meals a day? Tres comida al día. Sí, pero yo no comía esa comida porque esa era comida congelada. Oh, the food was frozen. Ahí nadie se comía esa comida porque era comida congelada. Nobody ate it. Y ahí no había, ahí no había trabajadora social en eso, en esos chistes de allá de Queens no hay. There were no social workers in Queens. Por eso fue que uno salió a los seis meses. That's why, that's why they. Nada hacía nos allá porque todo es un protocolo. No pude sacar los papeles nunca. No pude sacar los papeles porque todo allá era de siete a diez de la noche. Why do you need social workers at the shelter? Para los papeles. So for six months, um, were you working during those six months at the shelter? No, they weren't. 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 It certainly felt odd to hear that she got no help besides a roof and food when there are homeless Americans who can't get those same resources. All right. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Doug McGregor, he did a real good interview on Daniel Davis Deep Dive. <clears throat> you might want to watch that on South, what the heck was going on in South Korea. You know, as you know, the, uh, the leader there, but I'm going to read you his post. It, this does clear things up a bit because I told you that they declared martial law and it was like four hours later, martial law was gone. <laughs> well, it turns out uh, the South Korean leader, of course, is a, a United States puppet. And, uh, and because the, the, the parliament was going to vote him out or vote, go against some of his decisions, uh, he wanted to become a dictator. And uh, luckily, uh, South Korea, uh, the, the people and I guess the parliament didn't let it happen. But here, let's read this post. South Korean President Yoon won a razor thin election a few years ago, and it is rumored the CIA played a significant role in his win. We don't view South Korea as a sovereign state. America has multiple agreements that effectively give us control of their military. The losing party was charting a course towards independence. So that explains everything. Uh, this is uh, Insurrection Barbie again. Alejandro Mayorkas lied under oath. Mark Zuckerberg lied under oath. Jack Smith tampered with evidence. Alvin Bragg tampered with evidence. Liz Cheney hid exculpatory evidence. Fauci lied many times under oath. Merrick Garland ignored a congressional subpoena. Uh, Benny Thompson deleted records from the January 6th committee before a new Congress was sworn in. They keep saying Cattell, Cash, Cash Patel will weaponize justice against his opponents. What they mean is that he'll actually hand some justice out. <laughs> well, we can hope, you know. I mean, come on, all these people. I wish he put James Clapper in that category. That was years ago. He, that guy, uh, oh my God, he's a, he's a scumbag from hell.
you know, uh, I was in my pardon, Edward Snowden. Uh, this is uh, something, our country, our choice. Lazarov, Biden is attempting to leave as bad a legacy as possible by supplying Ukraine with American missiles. Let's watch that video now. As to what we can expect from Biden and his outgoing administration, well, the deliveries of attackers, missiles, and uh, the way they allowed uh, the British and the French to to, to use their own uh, missiles. Well, this is in a way an attempt to leave as bad a legacy as possible to the next administration. Okay. Jimmy Dore drops facts nonstop for two minutes straight. Your enemy is not who the media tells you it is. The enemy is the military industrial complex Let's watch that video now. We're the ones provoking this war, just like we provoked the war in Ukraine. We are now provoking a war with China. And what? who, who benefits? I'll tell you right now. Your enemy is not China. Your enemy is not Russia. Your enemy is the military industrial complex, which has been fleecing this country to the tunes of hundreds of billions and trillions of dollars. How many times are we going to have a defense secretary say, hey, we can't account for $2 trillion in the Pentagon again, That like, which has happened twice now in my life? lifetime. So again, people are being, uh, uh, the, the war machine cannot be stopped. Who's running this country? The war machine. It certainly isn't Joe Biden making these decisions. I would like to know who is making the decisions. And I just want to remind everybody, the United States is the world's terrorists. We just set the Middle East on fire in the last 20 years. And now we're doing a proxy war in Ukraine, which we provoked, NATO provoked, and it was just admitted that we provoked it by the former prime minister of Germany. And now we're trying to saber rattle with with china and they're predicting a war again china's not going to invade us china's not our enemy they, we might have an economic war that's what these are these are economic wars these are wars right. for in ukraine it's about liquefied natural gas and making sure germany and russia never come together because we fear russia's uh natural resources and manpower and we fear them getting together with germany with their technology and their capital and so that's why we blew up the Nord stream pipeline that's why we're doing the ukraine war this is all about hegemony imperialism and economic economics. And if there's a Marine somewhere, it's there because they're about to steal some natural resources from another country. As everybody's screaming about what a bad guy Putin is for invading Ukraine, the United States is currently occupying a third of Syria. And which third is that? It's the third that has the oil. And how do I know we're there to steal their oil? Because the president of the United States said so. And we're, not, we're not even benefiting economically. That's, I mean, of course, that's the rub. Jimmy Dore, appreciate it. Thank you. Ah, uh, preemptive pardon. How do Democrats always figure out new ways to become even more corrupt? <laughs> that was terrible. I mean, that's, that's so damn true. If you got a Democrat friend, I keep pointing this out. I would just want you to just get in their face and just say something like, you know, how, why are you for gender affirming surgery? Isn't that a nice way to say mutilation, gender mutilation surgery? Get in front of a Democrat and ask that question. See what they say. Ask them about the, the Hunter Biden pardon. See what they say. You got Democrat friends? Just, I'm, just ask, I'm just asking you to ask them a question. I know, that. oh my, that's political. I don't want to get political with my Democrat friends. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh my God. So we could, we could continue on, but the video is getting a little long in the tooth here. But I did want to get into some of my replies, you know. I always like my replies. To people. So Insurrection Barbie, Kamala Harris was the first candidate not to flip a single county since 1932. And then I, my reply was Kamala Harris was not a candidate. <laughs> she, she was crowned queen of the Democrat establishment. She never even got a vote. You understand who Democrats are? They're authoritarian dictators. Oh my God. I mean, these people, I understand her post was good. The first candidate. She wasn't a candidate. She was, she was queen of the Democrat Party. Uh, Dr. Fauci's hospital protocol is what killed millions of people, not COVID. I hope in 100 years from now, people will say his name in the same breath as Hitler. He deserves it. Like I said, he should, needs to go before an international court or an international tribunal and be convicted or per tried for criminal, for crimes against humanity. 
Okay, he needs to be tried for crimes against humanity. That little short troll is still getting a show for $600,000 a year or whatever he's getting paid in a security detachment. That's how corrupt the Democrats are. He should be in jail, man. Oh, man, I said, yeah, that's what I said. Fauci needs to face an international tribunal. May they sentence him appropriately. Ivanka Trump described, I, you know, I hate rising to the bait on these because everybody, this Ivanka Trump, I don't know if it's the real Ivanka Trump, but she just sits there and just tries to bait the hook to get you to give a reply. And these are the stupidest posts I've ever seen. But anyway, I, I did it. Uh, describe Chuck Schumer in one word. And I said, Chuck Schumer's a corrupt POS. Is that one word, POS? <laughs> so yeah, I rose to the bait occasionally. I, 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 as much as I want to kick myself for doing it. Uh, Ukraine will receive 50 billion based on frozen Russian assets in Europe and the United States. This was stated by the U.S. Secretary of State Blinken. According to him, they will be sent over the next few weeks and will support Ukraine for some time. And then I, my, my quote here, all right, understand, the dollar is going down. I told you it's mathematically impossible to save the dollar. It will be worth zero in the coming years if not sooner, okay? Stuff like this, when you take Russia's money, okay, you might not like Russia, you might hate Putin. Putin, you're just a Putin lover. When you steal $50 billion from a country, I don't care if it's Russia, China, uh, Venezuela, or whatever, and you give it to Ukraine, what do you think that signals to the rest of the world, man? They say, well, you know what? Any, any money we've got in dollars is not safe. It's not safe. And so I, my, my point was, I said, it's the end of the dollar as we know it. It's the end of the dollar as we know it. And that's just fine. I need to write a song, huh? So that was, uh, that was my point there with that reply. All uh, right. This is Kerry Lake, 100 and... 1,943 days since Epstein died, 1,617 days since Maxwell was arrested. Not a single one of their clients has been exposed, but Hunter Biden gets a pardon. Justice isn't blind, it's selective. <laughs> and I just told her she would enjoy my satire. If you, if you haven't watched the video, I did a good satire on the Hunter Biden uh, uh, pardon there. Uh, Empire of Lies, why is the United States radiate so much evil? Why is our country so ruthless and vile? My, uh, my reply, Democrats. <laughs> and then Elon Musk defund the American Civil Liberties Union. And then I said, who funds the American Civil Liber Liberties Union? Uh, my guess, Democrats, right? Uh, so breaking, President Biden just locked in a work from home deal for over 42,000 federal workers which would prevent Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy from ordering them to come, uh, come to the office to work five times a week. Thoughts? My reply, Democrats. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Dmitry Medenev. Turns out the outgoing uh, Secretary of State Blinken's a rare kind of degenerate. He's demanding Ukraine lower its conscription age to continue receiving U.S. assistance. This means 18-year-olds will now be dying, but the Biden administration could care less. My reply, they are called Democrats. <laughs> See why I wanted to read the replies? The theme of the video, Democrats? Oh, my God. Uh, this, is, um, this is just a reply here. If you have Democrat friends and want to bury your head in the sand, you must now confront them with the reality that their blind obedience to their Borg we must conform party. I keep calling the Democrats board. Like I said, there are a few good Republicans. There are no good Democrats. And they all vote in unison. So anyway, and then, of course, we just go on from there. I will come wrap up the video right there. We, there's some other news. Peace out. Stay free. Man, I had to get that on the video, huh? Look at that. That is awesome. Beautiful view, huh? Here's another view of it. Little tidbit for you. Britain, what happened to Great Britain, man? They just sent us the Dutch journalists to 80 hours of community service, which is, I mean, that's for a post on X. <laughs> 
man, if I was in Great Britain, I'd be, I'd be in jail forever, wouldn't I? <laughs> oh my God. No, I'm taking too many of these videos, but look at that. That's awesome, isn't it? And you can't see it now, but it was popping out the moon there. And it was just so cool. Taking too many scenery videos, but look at that. Isn't that cool? You got the moon here. I suppose that's Venus over here. That is just a cool, cool look. All right, so let's talk cybersecurity for one minute. You know, one thing I don't understand, a lot of people keep personal data on their cell phones. That is a huge, huge mistake. Okay? You can always offload the data on your phone, your pictures, uh, whatever, to a, uh, to a USB drive. Okay? But uh, the reason that I'm telling you this is because China just hacked just about everybody's cell phone <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> so all your person, anything you got on your cell phone, supposedly now is in Chinese hands. So uh, just a little cybersecurity tip for you from that cybersecurity guy. I'm that cybersecurity guy on YouTube and on Parler. That cybersec guy on X. Anyway, you know, since I, I do call myself that cybersecurity guy, I gotta let you know a little bit of cybersecurity information. And one thing, you know, another thing I wanted you to, to think about is whenever you get a text message or a phone call, Okay, delete that right away. Don't keep it on your phone. I mean, obviously, you got to keep business-related stuff, you know, that you're going to have to look at later. But uh, when you can delete it, delete it. And, of course, use Signal. Signal is compromised. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's a lot more secure than your regular text messaging app. So there you go. Peace out. Stay free. But I said giving them two-thirds of it in debt is another debt trap. I said, they can't pay back the money they already owe. They're never going to pay this back. So what you are doing is you're colonizing the place. You are going to own it, you are. And now, as if that's not bad enough, when the IMF gave them a loan in 2021, one of the, one of the, the conditions of the loan was that Ukraine changed its land purchase arrangement. At that time, foreigners couldn't buy land. So that was dropped. So then large corporations from Europe and America could buy lots of 25,000 acres at a time, 10,000 hectares. At this stage, European corporations have bought more land in Western Ukraine than the Russians have taken on the east side. We're saddling with a debt. It's a debt trap that they're never going to be able to pay back. We're going to, we're going to own the place. What the Russians don't own, we'll own, right? And Ukraine's sovereignty is a long, long piece away. Right. And still and still we don't mind continuing to throw throw working class Ukrainians into the meat grinder. Do they care about them? And all the all the politicians that voted to keep the war going, did any of them go over there and fight? Did any of them send their kids over? They didn't.